Good evening, ladies. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Koch speaking to you from Norristown Area High School on Tuesday the 15th, where we have a crossover game tonight between the Wissahick and Trogan, Trojans and the Norristown Eagles. A couple of highlights here before we get started, and, and I know we'll have a brief amount of time to get this in. Here's what we have. Wissahickens Trojans are currently 7-7. Seven and seven. They're 4-3 and three in the league. And according to Coach Kyle Wilson, a third-year veteran coach, there are a couple things that they have to address tonight to be successful. They have to take care of the basketball on offense. They have to be very disciplined. They have to get a lot of good looks. They have to be very careful with the basketball. They must handle Norristown's full-court and half-court pressure and traps. They are, as he indicated, a very good foul shooting team, shooting about 70 to 75 percent, particularly the second half of the uh, season. They are four and three in the league, and Coach Wilson from Wissahickon indicated that this is very important for them. Even though it's a crossover game, they still have the opportunity of catching up or doubling in the league. They want to finish above 500 and most importantly they have an opportunity of winning their division. Last year this team won the Freedom Division and they did get into district playoffs at a, at a relatively lower seed than they wanted but uh, this is a team that has five seniors. It is a veteran team, two of which started last year. However, there is a downside for Wissahickon tonight. Their starting point guard John Monster is out for this evening. He was ejected from the previous game and therefore is ineligible to play. How much is going to hurt Wissahickon remains to be seen. But speaking to Coach Evans prior to the game and without being aware of that, was pretty confident that they would be able to handle Wissahickon on the offensive side of the ball. And I think the loss of their point guard will truly hurt Wissahickon. Um, they do count on their six foot six player to do a lot of rebounding. Coach Wilson indicated that they are a very good shot blocking team, the best shot blocking team he's had in the three years that he's been at Wissahickon. So that may be a factor for Wissahickon. For Norristown, Norristown is in a, a quote, Coach Evans indicated they are in a must win situation. They are nine and five overall and in the league they're five and three. However, if they want to catch Apper, Horsham, and Sheltonham, two teams that are above them in the standings, they must play and win tonight. He stressed to me, this is a game where they have to play with a lot of heart. There is a sense of urgency to this game, and his concern, I think, is that this is a young team. Whereas Wissahickon will start five seniors, Norristown will start at the best two seniors, two juniors, and perhaps a sophomore. So Norristown will, of course, have to deal with a young team, an inexperienced team, and a team that is going to count on Lamont Wright, a transfer from Plymouth White Marsh, who's a junior. Julius Blackwell, Coach Evans indicated, has been playing very good basketball. So I guess that's going to have to be a quick wrap for me. We'll have to pick it up as soon as we have the introductions for the game. I'll see you in a couple minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Number 12, Matt 
Toughness. For Wissahickon. Number 21, Tom Gangini. Num number 21, Tom Gangini. Number 34, Matt Beardsley. Number 34, Matt Beardsley. 6'3", senior forward. Number 41, Bob Morgan. Number 41, Rob Morgan, 6'3", senior forward. And number 43, Jason Rodgers. And number 43, Jason Lander, 6'6", sophomore forward. Tom Gangini is the senior two guard and a team captain. Now for the Norristown Eagles. Number 10, the six foot one senior guard, Darnell Gowdy. Wissahickon is very much aware of his abilities. Number 20, Carl Dean. Number 20, Carl Dean. Number 15, Willis Garner. Number 31, Julius Blackwell, six foot two junior forward. And number 33, Lamont Wright. Number 33, Lamont Wright, six foot junior forward. The Eagles are coached tonight by Mr. John Callahan, Mr. Gray Pitts, and our own Mr. Mike Pitts, and Mr. Mike Young Young. The Norristown Eagles are coached by Coach Mike Evans, and the Wissahickon Trojans are coached by Kyle Wilson. The officials tonight are Stan Brown, a 15-year veteran, and James Smith, a 10-year veteran. Good luck. And we are getting ready for the opening tap. I would like to apologize for the fact that I will be doing both the play-by-play -play and the color. The original game plan was that I was supposed to do this with my son Brad. Uh, unfortunately, recently he had uh, back surgery and uh, we had expected him to be able to make it, but we had a minor setback today and the, and the neurosurgeon said no. So uh, I'm going to be doing it by myself trying to cover both ends of the ball, so I appreciate your support. Okay, opening tap, Wissahickon controls it after several Norristown and Wissahickon players touch it. Number 21 drives to the basket on the baseline, misses the shot, the ball was rebounded by Darnell. Norristown ball. And Lamonte Wright scores the jumper, three-point shot, and it's 3-0. Okay? We have an almost steal by Norristown. The Norristown bench thought that he had saved it, but in any case, Wissahickon has it. Inbounds it to number 34. Norristown's putting a lot of pressure on. Ooh, almost a backcourt violation. A lot of physical contact on the play. We have an inside play. 43 gets it, gets a lot of pressure. 21 gets the shot, makes the three. That is their senior captain, Tom Gangemi. Number 33 takes the deep shot for Norristown, Lamonte Wright. Ball's passed out. Number 21 has it for Wissahickon. Behind the back move, almost loses it back out to number 12. 41 has it in the corner, tries to get the feed, the ball is stolen by number 20. Ooh, deep shot off the glass, not a real good shot, not much iron around that basket shot. At the 636 mark, the score is 3-3, both teams have scored on long three-point shots. It seems early that Norristown's game plan defensively is to put a lot of pressure. Nice pass and play. Not a good shot by Darnell. Uh, 
could have been focused more on the lap and going up two hands instead he went up with one and missed the shot this shot by Wissa Hicken but rebounded offensive rebound by Wissa Hicken balls passed out corner shot offensive rebound again by Wissa Hicken 21 on a baseline drive passes it off to 43 underneath who's fouled good penetration and dish off to number 43 by number 41 Rob Morgan, the six foot three senior guard. Wissa Hicken inbounds it underneath the 43, passes it back underneath. Tough shot to number 34. And that's Matt Beersley, six foot three senior forward. Ball stolen by Wissa Hicken. Apparently he did go out of bounds. He did on the steal, did go out of bounds. It will be Norristown ball with 547 left in the first period and Woods Hicken leads 5-3. Woods Hicken putting some token pressure on in the backcourt. It looks like they're going to go with a 1-2-2. Two, 2-3. Two. Two, he said there's a foul on the penetration by number 33 for Norristown. And I would believe it's going to be a two-shot foul. Monte Wright will go to the line, shooting two. As I indicated prior to the game, Coach Evans from Norristown wants to make sure his Eagles take care of the basketball. This is a must win, in his opinion, tonight. They need to play with a lot of heart and a lot of energy. And it would seem that the Eagles have come out that way with their half court, full court pressure. It would seem that they are very focused on putting a lot of attention on the basketball. Wissa Hicken has the ball, 41 drives to the corner, gives it up to number 21. Getting a lot of pressure on Dor by Dornell. Norristown is in a very aggressive man-to-man, -man, looking to deny the passes. We have a steal by Willis, number 15, who hands the ball off to, and it, Willis gets the rebound and the follow and the score. It does seem Wissa Hicken will have problems with the pressure tonight. There's another one, almost steal, it will be a steal. A tough pass, baseline to number 34, Matt Beardsley. A, a tough pass to handle underneath the basket. So it will be Norristown basketball with 441 in the first quarter. Norristown leads 7-5. to Wissa Hicken is putting some token pressure on a 1-2-2, three-quarter court trap. Burning some clock on it defensively. Darnell with the ball at the top. Takes the jump shot, misses number 21 for Wissa Hicken, rebounds, and that would be Tommy Gantimi. The captain loses it, shots taken underneath, blocked. Wissa Hicken basketball. Good penetration. Short shot, a nice shot, a three-point shot by number 21, their senior captain. He is averaging 11 points a game, and he has been double figures just about every game this season, according to Coach Wilson from Wissahickon. Willis has the ball up top, easily penetrates on number 12. We have a long jump shot on the part of Lamont. Misses, it was a three-point shot deep in the corner. Wissahickon rebounds, number 12 has the basketball. He will be operating, I believe, at the point for the game, a good part of the game, because as I indicated in the pregame, they lost their senior point guard, John Manser, as a result of a one-game suspension because he was ejected from the previous game. Number 41 is inbounding the basketball. That's Rob Morgan. Wissahickon has it with the score. Wissahickon eight. Norristown seven at the three minute, almost the three minute mark. Long shot by number 12. That's a three point shot. I stand corrected, that was number 21, their senior captain. And that makes the score 11 to seven.
11 to 9. Nice score inside. Looks like Hicken's getting a lot of pressure, but they see a player underneath. Whoa, beautiful baseball pass by number 41 and scores underneath number 43. Nice play. Looks like both teams are going to go after each other with presses and traps, half court, three quarter court traps, matchups. We got a tip on the ball by number 12. Ball's passed out to Willis. There's a cross court pass to Lamont, to Darnell. Willis, a little careless with the basketball, did not follow the ball into his hands, it results in a turnover. So we have a 13 9 score, Wissahickon, with two minutes left in the first period. Number 21, their senior captain's bringing it up against Darnell, passes it to number 12. I will have to verify this because number 12 is not on the original roster for them. Uh, that is for Wissahickon. So I'm guessing it's Tom brother, that is the senior captain's brother, because there is an 11, and I'm speculating that might be it, but I will clarify that as soon as possible. Norristown with a steal, a three-on-one break, ah, sloppy pass, could have been a play inside, but uh, sloppy ball handling allowed Wissahickon to recover on it. We're still looking at a 15-11 score of Wissahickon. Willis gets the deep three, misses it. It does seem like Norristown's game plan in the first half, at least the first quarter, is to shoot a lot of threes. They're doing that. Wissahickon is also shooting some threes, but also getting some good shots inside. Number 43 just scored for them with a short turnaround jumper. That's Jason Landers, a six foot six sophomore. Almost steal, kind of casual on the uh, ball reversal from Norristown up top. It appears that Norristown is a little winded. A couple players are holding their sides, and that's usually a sign that you're a little tired. When you're holding, when you're holding your waist, that's not a good sign. Here's what we have. Wissahickon looks like they're going to start out in a 3-2 or a 1-2-2. It's a matchup. Darnell has the ball up top, he's screened. Passes the ball to 31 in the corner. We have both Blackwells on the court at this point. Julius and his brother, a rebound, and the rebound is controlled by Wissahickon. A lot of pressure on the ball. Opportunity to run, and they might, Wissahickon might. They pull it back, the numbers weren't there. 41 has it, gets a lot of pressure. Was able to get rid of the ball. Number 21 misses it. We have an almost steal. We do have a steal. Darnell has it into the corner. Pisses it out to Willis. Lamont with a great feed and penetration. Gets the shot before the buzzer, but missed shot. Here's what we have. At the end of the first quarter, a 17-11 score in favor of Wissahickon. One team foul, that is number 43. So the first quarter went very quickly, very few whistles. Norristown, I think, has to be more concerned with getting better shots. We've had several three-point shots in the first eight minutes of this game, and they have not been successful in making them. I think they have to be more attentive to their shot location, and looking to get the ball inside and look to go to the basket. Wissahickon has been able to handle Norristown's pressure and the difference in this game so far is the fact that they've been able to score a couple easy buckets underneath. That would be two of them. And I believe they have three threes at this point. So Norristown's going to have to do a better job picking up and rotating on, their, on Wissahickon's three-point shooters. And Norristown's going to have to do a better job controlling the ball and better shot selection. As we start the second quarter, Norristown inbounds the ball, and the lineup has Darnell, Lamont, Willis, and two substitutes. We have Lamont, number 33, 
with the three-point shot at 17-14. A lot of pressure by Norristown. Ooh, tough move to go behind the back with the baseline as the defender. The Wishaken player, number 12, is able to get away with it. We have a foul. Nice move on the part of number 34 for Wissick, and that's Matt Beardsley, the 6'3", senior. What he did well with that, he went against two Norristown players who are very, very vertical, hesitated, give a fake, drew both of them in the air and was able to draw the foul. Unfortunately for him, he missed the first of two. Norristown picks up their second team foul. Mr. Beardsley makes the second shot, so it's 18-14 Wissahickon. Norristown looks to push it up. Wissahickon's trying to trap. They are putting pressure, and oh, actually his foot was on the line, but the official was late getting to the spot. Didn't see it. Norristown with the ball. Number two. Jamal Blackwell loses. Let's see. We have a turnover here, and that would be I apologize, I'm trying to pick up on that number. Um, number 50, that would be Phil Ash for them. Yes, Phil Ash is the fifth player. We have Jamal Blackwell with the steal, hands it off to Darnell, gets the ball back to Jamal, takes the shot, doesn't use the glass, and it hurts him. Cost him the opportunity to score. Wissahickon again on the quick pass, short jumper, almost it is. Norristown ball. The ball was tipped out of bounds by the Wissahickon player, Matt Beardsley. So we have Norristown ball. Wissahickon is in a 1-2-1-1 full court press. Wissahickon is doubling the basketball. Norristown does a real good job handling the pressure in the backcourt, but they turn it over 15 feet from the basket, going sideline to sideline, the ball is thrown out of bounds. So the pressure did bother Norristown on that play. Wissahickon handles the pressure, it seems, pretty easily. Almost a duplication of what Norristown did down the other end. Wissahickon beat it for three quarters of the court and then almost turned it over at the 15 foot mark. Ball's inbounded in number 31, goes up strong, but very heavy off the glass. A turnover again by Norristown. Another turnover on the part of Wissahickon. Very sloppy passing by number 12. He had a quick pass and just throw it. Coach Wilson from Wissahickon is not pleased with that. Players have to do a better job possessing the basketball, sustaining that possession. We have another sub for Norristown. Gabe is Ari's in the game, first time. As soon as I get caught up, I'll get you what the lineups are. Darnell goes to the basket, misses. Phil Ash gets the rebound and the made shot. 18-16 at 5.47. Norristown, oh brother, oh brother. Wissahickon had attacked the press successfully. A good baseball pass, heavy. Player number 12 was open underneath, but couldn't hold the basketball. Again, I assume that's Tommy Gangini's brother, Pat. And as soon as I get that chance, I will clarify and confirm. Wissahickon still putting that pressure on. Full court, half court. And they force another turnover. It does appear, though, that Wissahickon is a little tired. It seemed to me on that when that ball went out of bounds, none of the Wissahickon players made a quick effort to either go after it or hustle down. They were all walking. Wissahickon has another sub, number 32 for them. Tom Pettit, six foot one senior. Number 12 gets a deep three for Wissahickon. That makes it 21 to 16, Wissahickon, putting a pressure on up top. Norristown has not been able to get untracked against the pressure. Good ball movement, but they're not getting the penetration, and the shots are getting hurried. A good pass, good rebound by Willis. 
Almost a good pass underneath. It is almost stolen by the Wissahickon player. Went out of bounds. Wissahickon is in a 2-3 underneath the basket. Norristown gets the ball up top. Wissahickon goes back to a 1-2-2 matchup. Good pass inside. Phil Ash does a very good job protecting the ball and using the backboard on the shot. Another good look underneath. And 31 can't complete the pass or the shot. Norristown has the ball up top. Lamont handles it. Passes the ball back out. Oh, fourth shot. Bad shot. Phil Ash does a good job rebounding. Almost second rebound. Hicken does look like they want to run. They do a lot of baseball passes. Good look underneath. Rebound, follow up, number 32 with the shot. Another three point shot. This is number 32 just off the bench. That would be Tom Pettit. He is a senior, and I would imagine he's had some playing time, and it shows it. At this point, Norristown has not been able to stop with Hicken's three point shooting. Another three-point shot for Norristown. This one's good by number 33, Monte Wright, who has done the bulk of the scoring. Interestingly, Darnell has been noticeably silent in this game. I believe he has one field goal. We have a blocking foul on the part of Phil Ash, and that would, I believe, be Norristown's third team foul, and Mr. Ash's second that is his second and the team third. We have a sub here. Darnell is back into the game. Amante Wright is out. Good ball movement on Wissahickon. Good fake. Shots blocked by the cylinder though. Mr. Beersley got the shot off, but the cylinder blocked it. He did not know where the, the backboard or the iron. He knew where the backboard, but he didn't know where the iron was. But he was lucked out. The official called a foul. And he's at the line shooting too. Very quick on the line on the release. And it is 25 to 21. Julius Blackwell comes back into the game. So I'll give you the Norristown lineup. Gabe is in. Carl Dean is in. Julius Willis. Gabe with a long three. Hits just about the backboard. It skimmed the iron. With three minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half, Wissahickon leads 25 to 21. A much better part of the second period for Norristown. They have put some points on the board, but they have not been able to stop Wissahickon's deep three-point shooting. We have a sub for Wissahickon. Matt Beersley comes out in number 21. Their senior captain is back in the game. That is Tom Gangeni. Ball's passed to Tom underneath, passes it back to 32. Ball goes into 41, has a turnaround jumper. Okay. Norristown's Carl Dean has the hand on the ball. He and 43 for Wissahickon were fighting for it. And uh, Jason wasn't able to get his hand on it. The ball's turned over. Norristown is looking to push it up. Gabe has the shot. Attempt doesn't. Darnell is still not looking to shoot the ball. He's going through. They're putting a lot of pressure on him. He's going to be open on this one. Gets the good luck. Nobody there. Phil Ash does a great job on the, is it Phil? I stand corrected on that. Julius went very high on that. Got the rebound. Norristown moving it up. Woods Hickens putting a lot of pressure on the passing shooting lanes. Gabe drives and loses it. He had his defender, number 41, in the air, but wasn't able to sustain the ball. Monte writes back in, Gabe is out. This is a very quick lineup for Norristown with Julius and Carl Darnell. They're in a 2-2-1 pressure, but Wissahickon has been well coached on this. They're moving the ball. They're going diagonal against the press. 
and against his own press. You want to treat it in a Z fashion, diagonal passes, and that's exactly what they're doing. They didn't finish on that series, but they are attacking and defeating the press. Norristown, the 155 mark. We have a shot by Kyle Dean, a fadeaway jumper. It makes it 25 to 23. Norristown again in a 2-2-1 pressure. Passive, ball gets to the middle. Okay, there's a steal. And 41 did not hustle after the turnover and didn't protect the ball. Not a good move. Not a good move by number 21 for Wissick. And you do not, in my opinion, go behind your back with the baseline two feet away and the line as a potential defender. Wissick has been really sloppy the last four possessions. We haven't, ooh. Could have been a foul. I thought there should have been a foul on that. In any case, we have a Wissahickon timeout with the score 25-25. I think it's going to be Norristown ball. The official was unclear and indecisive on that play. So here's what we have. Norristown and Wissahickon are tied at the 112 mark in the second period, 25-25. Two players from Norristown have two fouls, number 10, Darnell Gowdy, I believe, has two. And Phil Ash, number 50, has two. That accounts for the four team fouls. Wissahickon has one foul. So fouls are not, I believe, a problem in this. Darnell, Lamont, Willis, Julius, and Carl are your starting five with a minute 12 left in the first half. Wissahickon has done a very good job handling the basketball and controlling their shot selection even without their starting senior point guard. Okay? Norristown putting the pressure on. We have a steal. Again, Willis jump shot. Not really needed at this point. Julius with the shot. 43 rebounds, protects the ball. Now, Wissahickon has it with 50 seconds left. I would imagine they're going to get a lot of pressure from Norristown to force the shot or hurry the shot, make Wissahickon do a better job controlling it. A penetration and a foul. Number 12 again gets fouled. I believe it's a non-shooting foul. It is. Wissahickon will handle it. The last time Wissahickon had it underneath the basket on the inbounds, they lost it. Norristown is in a 2-3. Wissahickon is looking to go deep. They do. We got a three-point shot. Whoa. That was about 23 deep on that one and nothing but net by Tommy Gangeni. He has to be in double figures now. That By my counts, that's his third or fourth three. That puts it at 28-25. Another three going up. Missed. Question on that one. We have a foul. Yes. Julius not not a real good play on that. And the reason I say that, the Wissicken player had the ball. He came over the top, picked up the foul. That is their sixth. That's his first, so it doesn't hurt him individually or team-wise. However, Wissicken does have a chance for the last shot prior to the end. There's a penetration drive. He did not use the backboard. Unbelievable. Senior player not using the backboard. We get a shot that almost goes in. And that senior player was number 41. Rob Morgan, a 6'3 senior, did not use the backboard. And that could have been a five-point spread for Wissahickon. It escapes me at this level and at this time that players cannot all effectively use the glass. That's one of Larry Bird's things. Uh, Certainly so many coaches and players have stressed the utilization of the backboard when you're inside the paint. Coaches teach players to go box to box on layups, inside top of the box on both sides, right or left, and use the box. And as one shooting instructor indicated, the best friend that you have on that court is that backboard, and you have to use it. All right, a quick recap. Here's what we have. Excuse me a second. As we recap this, we have a 28-25 score. Wissahickon is leading. We have a 10-minute break for the half. 
and uh, Wissahickon has done a very good job with the three-point shooting. Their three-point captain, I believe, has four threes. So I will check the halftime stats on that. Norristown has to do a much better job controlling the basketball, better shot selection. They're getting threes, but they have made very little attempt to go to the basket, very little penetration, and very few shots inside the three-point mark. And I think it's illustrated by the fact that Wissahickon has one team foul with the quickness and size of Norristown. Norristown has to do a much better job going to the basket and forcing some fouls and getting themselves to the foul line. I will pick up with a couple comments and uh, endorsements from our sponsors a couple minutes prior to beginning of the second half when I can confirm some stats with you and uh, some individual scores. Okay, thank you. I'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, got it. I did check the stats and did get a clarification on a couple of things that uh, were not correct part of the game. Matt Duffin is actually number 12 on the program is listed as 32, but it's Matt Duffin. I'll give you a little bit of a rundown on the scoring here. Uh, Wissahickon and the difference in this game so far, which is a 28-25 game. Wissahickon has six threes. Uh, Tom. Ganjani has three of those, Matt Duffin has two, and Tom Pettit has one. Norristown, on the other hand, has three for 14 from the three-point strike. They trail 28 to 25, but their inconsistency, three for 14, and the fact that they've taken one foul shot in the first half is an illustration that they're content with that. If they were making it, of course, I would be saying something very different, but they're not, and I believe they have to look to go inside, look to penetrate, draw some fouls. Nobody from Wissahickon is in foul trouble. Wissahickon has the ball on the side. Norristown has come out very aggressive, putting some man-to-man -man pressure on on the double. But Wissahickon is a well-coached senior team they get the offensive rebound, kick it back out. They do use ball and shot fake, pass fake very well. Number 20, number 12, buries another three, so they're picking up where they left off in the first half, and that would be Matt Duffin. Norristown makes the drive, Dornell gets the shot, misses it, number 10 has it, passes it to Lamonte, Back out to Willis, who's going to drive. The lane was there. He gets the short jumper, the basket. It's 31 to 27. Wissahickon is continually attacking the press by getting the ball to the middle. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uncontested layup. Poor, con poor ball handling there. They're giving up at the midpoint of the court. Now, let's see. That time they handled it similarly, but they got the ball to the wing. Oh, force another turnover. Double dribble. You just don't expect to see that with five seniors out on the court. A veteran team should not be turning the ball over like that. Wissahickon comes back with pressure. Ball gets passed to Darnell, who skips it over to Willis, who sees number 55 wide open good look on the part of Willis then that ties the score Billy Lucas was the player who scored that layup Wissickin comes right back with number 12 again and that's Matt Duffin good shot Norristown misses the shot, Wissahickon rebounds. At the six minute mark, it's 33-31 Wissahickon. Another turnover, three turnovers to start the second half and four possessions for Wissahickon. Coach Wilson can't be happy with that, but he's relatively quiet and reserved, as both coaches seem to be for Norristown and Wissahickon. A penetration drive, not a good shot, rebound by Carl. 
misses rebound by number 55 again and number 20 Carl Dean rebounds nobody boxed out for Wissick and they got four offensive shots in that series looking to attack it they get it to the middle again back to the sideline passes it to 43 does not go up strong on the shot short strokes it Norristown's pushing it up Willis sees Kyle open underneath Good fake, nice reverse layup by Lamonte Wright. Nice reverse layup. Norristown takes the lead, 35-33. Wichita Hicken turns it over. It'll be a timeout, I believe, coming up soon. I know he has them to burn because I think he called one the first half and that was a 32nd. So I would imagine if Norristown scores here, Wichita Hicken will be calling a timeout. Wichita Hicken forces the turnover. Billy Lucas turned it over on that last possession. Wichita Hicken has it. Number 41 takes the jump shot. He is fouled. Yes, I don't know if that's a three. Basket's good. Basket. Okay, 35-35. What's a hicken? Turnover. Fast break. Billy Lucas. Fast break layup. It looks like Norristown's going to try and push the ball up court this half. A very dejected look on the part of one or two of the Wissahickon players. I don't know whether it's fatigue or unhappy with their turnovers. Wissahickon is inbounding the ball in the front court. Ball gets passed into 43. Gets it up top to number 33. Raphael Twiggs. Captain passes it to 43. Back up top. Is looking for that shot. Nice look. Nice look. And Raphael Twiggs has a short jumper. Beautiful shot. Good ball movement. Good look away pass on Wissickens part. Still putting the pressure on. A 1-2-2. Two, two. Norristown handles it. Darnell passes it to Willis who penetrates. And again, Bill Lucas. Six points in this half. Willis set him up with that. Norristown in a 2-2-1. Wissick and still attacks it the same way. Middle, back to the middle or to the side. Good ball movement on Wissick. And there's the jumper. You give it to him. You're asking for trouble. That is his fourth three. Senior captain Tom Kanjeni makes it. And that gives them a one-point lead. We have an almost steal. We do have a steal. Almost sloppy handle here. Poor shot on that one, though. Poor shot. Wasn't sure what to do with it. Bill took the shot. Tom Gangemi has it. Almost. He, oh, brother. Great assist. And Carl Dean goes solo and dunks it. That'll bring some of the fans up. And it does. Wissa Hicken keeps coming back though. There's another, nope, it should be a two. Oh, 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 oh. I thought his foot was on the line. Maybe my fault, but they go back up and Tom has another three point shot. That is at least his fifth. The pace is picked up considerably and the scoring, the shooting and scoring is picked up big time in the last couple minutes, 43-41. Penetration score by Darnell. That is his third and fourth point. Tie at the 147 mark of the, of the third period. A must win for Norristown and a game that Wissahickon feels it has to win if it wants to stay competitive for their division title within their league. 43 has the ball underneath. Gets the shot, buries the head and the shoulder and makes it 45-43. Billy Lucas is uncontested underneath. That is eight points for Bill Lucas. All layups are off the glass. 
Woods Aiken was sleeping on that play. 111.45, the press is not a factor against Woods Aiken. We have a turnover on another behind the back. Willis makes the pass. Ooh, ooh. Again, sloppy, but it's still Norristown possession. Willis drives, a floater, makes it 47-45 Norristown. Ball gets passed to the middle to Raphael, back out to 41, back out to Kanjemi, to Twiggs, to Duffin. There's 27 seconds left on the clock. And it could be that Wissickin is going to, if they can, sustain possession for the last shot. 14 seconds and counting. Tom has it, looks to penetration. Oh, oh, layup. I'm surprised he's been shooting threes all night. Got the penetration, nobody picked him up. Darnell forces the shot, no foul. He's not happy with the call, felt there could have been a call, and there wasn't. Here's what we have as a quick recap. It's 47-47, great game. A very important game for both teams. And neither team's in foul trouble. One foul in this period. I believe that's seven, eight. It's eight for the game. And seven of those eight have been against Norristown. Wissahickon has been able to get a great look with their threes. Tom Gangeni has, I believe, three in this period. That has been a difference on the Wissahickon side. Billy Lucas had eight points in that period for Norristown. And two or three of those field goals were off the transition, off the break. Wissahickon has to do a better job seeing that transition and stopping the layup. It's interesting, Wissahickon has to stop Norristown's inside and their transition, and Norristown has to stop Wissahickon's three-point shooting, in particular by Tom Gangeni. So here what we have. It will be Norristown ball to start the final period, 47-47. Willis has it. Lamonte Wright has it. Passes it back to Darnell. Gets the shot off the backboard. 2-2-1 two, two, press. They've been looking the middle. They do ball fake very well. And yes, we do. That is a foul on Darnell. I believe, I'm guessing, quick call, but I think that's his third. We'll see in a moment. It is his third, the team second. Um, I don't think that'll be an issue at this point. He's been playing well. Wissahickon turns it over again. That has to be a major concern for Wissahickon. Those turnovers, missed layups and turnovers. How many times have we heard that story? Oh, poor shot on the part of Carl's part. I think he has a knee problem. He's down holding his knee. We're going to have an official's timeout. I'm wrong on that. It's Lamonte Wright came down on his ankle. He signaling to the bench he needs a timeout. He is being replaced by number four for Norristown. Darnell Wise. What's the Hicken ball? 7 14, 49 47. Neither team in team foul trouble. Two fouls for Norristown, none for Wissahickon. One player for Norristown in foul trouble, that's Garnell with three. Norristown just picks up its third foul, and that would be on number 31, Julius Blackwell. That is his second. Ball is inbounded, turnover again. Here's the break, number four. 
Misses, misses, rebound. Willis on the shot, hurries it. Another rebound. Great effort, but 31 can't get off his feet. Wissahickon has the ball. Almost foul. 34 does the drive, passes it off. Raphael gets the shot, uses the backboard. How important that is. Number 12, late getting back for Wissahickon. That would be Matt Duffin. Need to run the court, both ends, people. That court, I believe, is flat on both ends, and you need to run it both ways. Julius with a good rebound. Willis gets a long three, misses it, and 31 rebounds finally for Wissahickon. That's Jed Carson, 6'4", senior. 49-49 at the six-minute mark. We have a couple subs in or changes for Norristown. I'll identify those as soon as I can catch my breath. Wissahickon looking to drive. Norristown and a man putting a lot of pressure on the ball in the passing lanes. A fadeaway jumper by number 21. Their captain, not a good shot. Um, I think he forced it. Now I'll see if I can get caught up with the changes here. Darnell's in for Norristown. Willis, Julius, um, Darnell, and Jamal. Next opportunity, I'll give you a quick catch up with Wes Aiken, who has made a couple changes. One player different than their starting lineup. Long three, rebounded by number four, Darnell. Passes it back out to Darnell who sees Jamal underneath. Good pass. He was fouled before he could do anything with it. So it will be Norristown ball underneath. Tom Ganjemi's in. Matt Duffin is in. Was Hicken putting a lot of pressure on? Match up, moving to the shot areas. Deep pass. Norristown's got Willis penetrating. Makes a good penetration. Lean in pass. Willis with a nice reach in on that pass. Norristown scores an easy bucket. Good look underneath. Shot's not there. Good fake. Good look underneath. Oh, almost missed shot, almost heavy by number 43, Jason Landers, but he finishes it. 444 and it's 53, 51 was a hicken. They have to do a better job of stopping Willis. They got a tip here, Jamal's going to get the shot and makes it. No backboard, but he makes it. Tie game. Oop. Will Norristown looks a little fatigued on this possession. Back out. There's their shooter. Rebounds, misses. Nice fake and reverse layup. That time by Matt Duffin. Puts them back up by two. We have a Wissahickon timeout with the score. 55-53 Wissahickon at the four minute and eight second mark. We start at the four minute mark, Norristown possession trailing by two. Wissahickon has the basketball. We have a push, I believe, 
Oh, if I have this one right, I think that's on Darnell. And if it is, that will be his fourth. It is, that is Darnell's fourth. Official scores notifying the bench. Of course, it's on the board. Number 43 shoots it. Not a good shot. Didn't use the backboard. That was Jason Landers. Missed it. Norristown possession with less than 350. Darnell has it to Willis. Gets a three. Misses it. And a rebound by Wissahickon. Ted Carson, I think it's Ted Carson, had the rebound. Wissahickon has it. Whoa, almost turned over. Pass the 43 to Carson. Back out to Matt Duffin, who handles it up top. Ted Carson has it, almost turned it over. 41 to 43, short jumper, misses it. Nothing but air on that shot. Norristown's gonna look to push it up. One on three, Darnell penetrates, dish, dishes it off. Carson rebounds, number 12. No numbers for Wissahick, and be best to give it up here. They do. Number 34 with the rebound and a foul. Whoa, offensive foul, whoa. Key foul at this point in the game, 55-53. Wissahick can lead Norristown basketball. 21 comes back in for them, replacing Carson. That is their captain. So we have 41, 21, 34, 43, and 12 in for Wissahick. Norristown ball, Jamal has it, getting some pressure by Wissahickon. Passes it to Darnell. Jamal does good jump. However, there is a foul, misses the shot. That was Julius, I believe. Yes, it was Julius on the shot, complaining about the call, but nonetheless, it holds. It's told to get his shirt in. Wissahickon ball with the 223 mark. Norristown in their 221, taking away that middle pass. They better get it up. There's only a couple seconds left. They do. They do. Wissahickon makes good use of the ball movement. Whoa, number 12. I don't know how important that is. There's 205 left, but it gives it a five point lead. Matt Duffin with the three. No conscience on that shot. Norristown needs a score. Penetration, number 20, they get it. Kyle Dean gets up high in the boards. And it is, whoa, 43 has the basketball, passes at the time. Here's the player, good fake. Good shot fake by Matt Duffin. Unfortunately, he walked with it first. That could be a critical turnover at the one minute, 41 second mark. Norristown is going to call a timeout. Yes, they do. Here's what we have, people. Norristown has five team fouls. Darnell with four. Julius with three. Wissahick and there's nobody in foul trouble. They only have team fouls of two. The next alternating possession will be Wissahick this possession will be Norristown. And it's 58-55 with 141 left. Wissahickon is open in a 1-2-1-1 full court pressure. Squeezing the clock, trying to force and they almost get a turnover. They almost knocked me off the chair and the table, but they didn't. Norristown is looking, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> for the shot. Julius Blackwell. <coughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of words here. We have a momentary pause. 
Here's what we have. It's 58-57. Julius Blackwell buries an important two. Lineup change for Norristown. Phil Ash is back into the game. We have a turnover. I'm not sure what we have on this. I think we have a foul on Wissahickon. On the inbounds play. I, they do. We do. A foul's on Wissahickon. So it hurts them with the possession and the foul. They lost the possession and they pick up a foul. Norristown still trails by one at 58-57. A long jump shot. Rebound by number 41. And that was Rob Morgan. Wissahickon has the ball. There's 55 seconds. Still a lot of time left. Norristown has some fouls to give. They're out man-to-man, -man, putting a lot of pressure on. There is a turnover. There is a turnover. Another almost turnover. Wissahickon better get back on defense. They do. There's 38 seconds. Norristown's going to call a timeout. Okay. Quick update. Wissahickon turned it over. It is Norristown basketball. Neither team in foul trouble collectively or individually. It is 58-57. Wissahickon, Norristown ball. The next alternating possession favors Wissahickon. So we have a great table set for the last 35 seconds. If anybody just picked up and just turned into the game, you picked a great time to say it. The last 35 seconds could be very eventful. I know my heart rate's up. I know that quite a few of the fans are up. This should be a great 35 seconds, 35.5 seconds. As soon as I can, I'll give you an update on the starting five for the last 35 seconds. I think it is Willis. It is, uh, I, let's see what we do have here. Julius is in, Carl Dean is in, Billy Lucas is in, Willis, Darnell, Julius. That's it, there's your five. Wissahickon is in a matchup. One, two, one, one. Oh, Julius was wide open underneath, but they didn't see him. There's 20 seconds left, people, 20 seconds. We get another timeout. Good call, good call. He has him to burn. Hey, I, I'm guessing here, but it looks like Norristown is going to hold. I'm guessing here. Hold for the last shot. Based on what I saw in the last 14 seconds, they're going to look for that last shot and look to win it. The upside of that, of course, is Wiss Hickam won't have a chance to score. The downside is they better get that shot. If they miss it, get the rebound and put it back up. So the rule of thumb is you want to get that shot off with about seven seconds left, figuring three seconds on the rebound and miss and give you a couple seconds to rebound or possibly foul in the backcourt, put them on the line. Even that at this point won't help because Norristown still has to give two fouls to put him in that situation. So we have 58-57, 18.5 seconds left in the clock. Norristown needs to foul twice to put him in that foul situation. Not much time here to do it. Darnell's going to inbound the basketball. Willis, Julius, Billy Lucas, and this time we have Wissahickon with a timeout. And he's checking, their coach is checking with the bench to see how many timeouts he has. Good call on his part. He got to look to see on what the lineup's going to be for Norristown and where and who is going to inbound the basketball. My guess is you have to get the ball into Willis's hands. He's done a great job tonight on his penetration. I wouldn't be looking for that long three. At this point, you want to take a good shot close to the basket, preferably a penetration. Make the officials blow the whistle. The 90% rule indicates that if you drive, you get into the paint, the whistle blows. Nine out of 10, it's against the defense. So I'd be pushing them, tell them, look to get it inside, look to go inside, penetrate. Here we go. 
Darnell's going to inbound it, looking to get it to Julius Does back out to Darnell. Whoa, we have almost altercation here. Number 31 and 21, and 21 is allowed to grab and chew up some clock. They have some fouls to burn. All right, Norristown's inbounding it again. Okay, Willis has it. Whoop, he's fouled. The game plan is they have the fouls to give and they're going to try and throw Norristown out of its cohesion. They have both teams, a five team. Wissahickon has two to give then. One to give before in a one and one. Darnell's going to inbound it at 13 to one o'clock. Willis has it. Here's a, whoa, I thought Carl was going to shoot it. Darnell's in the position. Willis, Carl, and he makes it. Unbelievable. I think everybody is in shock. There's zero, zero point five seconds left. There seemed to be a little indecisiveness on the part of Norristown who was going to shoot it, but as it turned out, Carl Dean gets the shot from the corner. Nobody there to put a hand up. He gets an uncontested three. The score is 60-58. I believe they're going to set the clock at 0-0-5 or 0-0-1 because Wissahickon called timeout prior to the buzzer. Yep, a zero, zero point two seconds left on the clock. People, I don't know if it's mathematically, chronologically possible to do that. I believe the NBA has a number, it's zero, zero point five that you can catch and shoot. And at this point in time, I can't imagine that you're going to be able to catch it and shoot it. As soon as the player touches the ball, the clock goes at two tenths of a second at the best you can hope is to tip it and to do that with 94 feet I would think is going to be if not impossible almost impossible here's what we have Wissick is going to inbounds it with a 1-2-2 two, two set they're going long and he hits the ceiling he hits the ceiling a good look it's a good effort but it is a short ceiling in the middle and uh, hits the ceiling, so that will do it. Norristown win bound the basketball. All they have to do now is touch it, and they do, and that's the end of the game. Norristown wins it in a very dramatic, come from behind fashion, 60 to 58. Wissick and players are walking off, very dejected. It looks like <laughs> there is a lot of confusion here, people. I apologize, but players have walked off the court. It is now, this is amazing. The clock is showing one second. We had less than a second left when we inbounded it underneath. We had 0, 0 0.2. Now we have one zero. We actually gained a second on two inbounds plays. I must admit I'm confused by that, but I'm, if you see the clock, if the uh, cameraman has shown you that, it was actually 1-0 on the clock when two inbounds plays later, earlier it was 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. Well, I know I'm mentally and emotionally exhausted. Norristown wins it 60-58. to 58. Uh, A lot of individual stars, I think, for Norristown. Key game at the end. Certainly Billy Lucas was big for them, and, and I think you have to applaud Willis Gardner for the assist that he had in this game, the penetration and the good looks and very few turnovers. Again, I'm blind with the stats, but uh, a very good game on the part of, of Willis Gardner and Lamonte Wright, and without doubt, Carl Dean in the second half was big. The short jumper earlier in the fourth quarter, and certainly that short 
uh, that three-point shot late in the game that, with a couple seconds left. On the Wissahickon side, certainly kudos go to Tom Gangeni with, I believe, five or six threes. Matt Duffin was in four or five threes. A very well-played game on both teams' part. Uh, very well played in the second half in particular. And uh, opposites, a must win for Norristown in very dramatic fashion. They win it, and uh, Wissahickon needed this game to be in the race for that Freedom Division title. That's going to make it very difficult for them. They now fall two back in their division. So Norristown stays on pace. They're one back, I believe, in their division. And uh, that puts them at, I believe, the 10 and 5 mark. And more importantly, it puts them at a 6 and 3 behind Hatboro Horsham and Cheltenham. The plus there is, uh, although they lost to Hatboro Horsham, I believe they play them here. And they have defeated Cheltenham and other two teams that are ahead of them. I would like to thank everybody for their patience tonight. Again, I apologize for doing it singularly, but uh, as I indicated in the pregame, my son and I were supposed to do it, and uh, as a result of a back injury, is unable to. So I had a lot of fun tonight, and uh, I would like to thank the sponsors and the Norristown staff for the opportunity of doing this, and look forward to seeing you sometime next week, probably the next Tuesday game or possibly as early as Friday with the women's game. Thank you, have a good week, and uh, see you sometime in the next couple days.